This is all about the basic calculator functions, lesson, lesson 2D, and these are the two calculators that are usually lent to you for the GED. Most likely it's going to be this FX260, this Casio, right here. And it is a scientific calculator, but you're probably going to just be using the basic keys, all right? And the testing center will lend you a calculator for one part of the test and possibly for the science and social studies part. And you'll have to complete the other half of the test with only scratch paper and your amazing analytic abilities, okay? So here I've got the calculator labeled with all its parts, all right? So let's start up here. We'll go around like a clock. Right here we can see the on button, see the on key, and it resets the calculator. This key right here, the X with the little Y exponent, that raises a number to a certain power. And you don't need to worry about that right now. We'll get into that with exponents later on in the playlist. All right. Here we have a closed parentheses and an open parentheses right here. Those are the parentheses keys in case you need them, which you might. And we have a C and an AC key. The C key clears the last entry you made. The AC clears all entries and calculations. All right. So if you're working on a new problem, you can push AC to erase anything you've, did, you've put in there from before. Right here is the multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction keys. Right here, see that? These four? Those are the operation keys. And we can see we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We can see here's our number keys right here. Here's our equal sign down here. This EXP is for scientific notation. We'll get into that later on in the playlist too. Here's the decimal point key. That's if you're doing anything with money or decimals. And this key right here, it's got a, a plus and a slash and a minus. That's the change sign key, so you can actually change a sign. If you look here, follow this red line, there's a little script A with a fraction B over a C. That's the fraction key. And there's a shift key right here. See, it says shift up there. And that changes the key to a second function. And then, this one right here, this x with the little 2 exponent, that's the square and square root key. We'll get into squares and square roots later on in this playlist also, all right? So at least you know what the uh, calculator looks like, and you'll be a little bit familiar with it. So remember, when you're adding or multiplying, we can enter the numbers in any order. The commutative property says we could do that. The commutative property of addition and the commutative property of multiplication say we can add or multiply in any order, back or forth, it won't matter, we'll get the same answer. But when we're subtracting or dividing, their order is really important. When we're subtracting, the number that's being taken away must be second. And you can't say that the smaller number is second because when you get into algebra, you could do 10 take away 16. So you could be taking away a larger number to get a negative answer. So make sure that the number that's being taken away is the second number, okay? And in division, the number that's being divided must be first. You ought to write down uh, this little bit of info in some notes. If you've got a spiral notebook and you're keeping notes during this playlist, which is a really good idea, you might want to write things like this down, okay? All right, now, it says on Monday, the movie theater sold... 724 tickets. They sold 590 on Tuesday and 682 on Wednesday. How many tickets were sold for those three days? So we need to combine all the tickets sold for those three days to get the answer we know we need to add. So we're going to put in a 7, a 2, and a 4, and the plus sign, the 5, the 9, the 0, and the plus sign, the 6, the 8, the 2, and an equal sign, and our answer will show up on the window right here of the calculator on the screen, all right? How many more were sold on Monday than Tuesday? Well, now we're comparing and we need to find a difference between the two. How many more were Monday? So that's subtraction. We take the Monday number and put in a 7 and then a 2 and then a 4 and hit the subtraction button key. Then we put in 5 and a 9 and a 0 and the equal and that'll give us the difference. They sold 
5,768 each week for five weeks. How many did they sell in five weeks? Well, we're combining equal groups. It's this amount for five weeks. So you could do 5,768 plus itself five times. Just keep adding this number five times. You could do that, or you could just multiply it by five. We put in the five, then the seven, then the six, then the eight, then hit the multiplication key, then the five for the five weeks, and then the equal sign, and it'll give us our product. They sold 4,256 bags of popcorn in one week. Now, sometimes you're going to see word problems, and you just need to know there's seven days in a week. What was the average number of bags sold each day? That means we need to split this into the days of the week. And there's seven days in a week, so we do four, then two, then five, then six. We hit the division key, then the seven for the seven days in the week, and equals, and it'll give us our quotient. All right? So right now, you should be ready to do the GED skill focus on page 49. If you do the skill focus and you're having trouble, and you get some of them wrong, because there are answers in the back of the book, or you're reading the problem and you're like, I don't know how to do this, this is crazy. Well, then you need to go back in this playlist and figure out what lessons you skipped or missed or didn't get, okay? And there's links in all the descriptions of the videos for easier videos to help you to explain it in different ways, okay? Once you finish the skill focus on page 49, you're ready to do the GED mini test for lessons one and two on pages 50 and 51, okay? Our next video is Estimating to Solve Problems. It's Lesson 3A. And in this description is a link to the GEDTestingService.com site that has tutorials for the FX260 and the TI30XS. It's in English and Spanish, all right? So you can watch their video tutorial, tutorials, okay? So maybe that might even help you more than mine. Okay? That's just in the description. You just click on it. It's so easy to find. I'm trying to make everything easy for you to get to. All right? So I hope you're doing well. Keep your chin up. We're going to make it. I'll see you next video. Bye.